guys i think we can get started so game number one we have from king hunter and king hunter was playing with the black pieces so let's flip the board around there we go and see what happened here d4 e6 and one question by King Hunter is what to do against the improved London system. So the London system, which is pretty much a system where white puts it down f3 bishop in a 4e3, c3, knight b2, very safe setup for white, is has gained a lot of popularity in recent years, as it is very solid. White is not risking too much. And on the other hand, rich positions emerge. And you can just play and you don't need to lot of know a lot of theory but actually at this point as it has become so popular the theory has developed and now there are a lot of options and there's a lot of theory so what to do against it so there are many options as you can imagine one that i recommend is to play d5 which is standard to play c5 but now this important moment here most people play knight c6 okay but it's an interesting idea to play with bishop d6 and i think it was first or i think one of the top players who played first was Aronio, but by now carlson has played it and it seems to be very smart bishop g3 now castle and the point is not to develop the knight to c6 but to develop the knight to d7 of course right now that's not possible that bishop would be hanging so black starts with queen c7 and let's say white plays the normal move bishop d3 and now the point is not to play knight c6 then there's d takes c5 black would lose the pawn but play knight bd7 now d takes c5 obviously is not a problem and black is preparing e5 and if you get e5 in without any issues then you just equalize very comfortably of course there are some options for white but i think if you look into this it's not too much work to check so just check out the, the top level games. That's usually a good tip if you want to figure out a variation. And then of course, check what the computer says as well. But if you put in some time here, I think you'll have a decent setup against London. All right, so let's see what you did. Bishop e7. So you played a rather, let's say, reserved uh, setup here. It didn't take up too much space. Of course, it's possible, but I think white gets a tiny bit of an edge here in the opening b6 ah oh, yeah important moment here i just want to check after d6 your opponent play h3 to stop knight h5 which would get you the bishop here so your opponent paid attention to that bishop b7 tuck 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 all right now you play d5 now it just feels like you lost the tempo right you played d6 and then d5 it's possible but still just i mean doesn't really feel right so what else could you do there's the option to play with c5 and queen c7 personally i don't like it that much for for black because you're always in this diagonal of the bishop and i don't think it's that great what i would rather recommend here is rook e8 and then to bring the knight to g6 and uh, maybe bring the bishop back and then you can still think about okay do i want to go e5 do i want to go c5 and you stay quite flexible okay um so I would just give this as an alternative i mean d5 is not not a big problem but just doesn't it just didn't feel right to me all right so d5 knight e5 now you go c5 which I think is perfectly fine. I mean, there was also the move knight takes e5 here, d takes e5, knight e7. Also looks completely fine to me. And then you can still go c5, maybe even go f6 at, at times. Should be good. So c5, bishop h2, knight e4. I like this move, it's a good move. Bring the knight forward and have the option of f6. Now f4, and here though you played f5, which is fine. Your position is completely fine because the bishop in h2 is like locked in there. It's not really well placed, right? It's just looking on f4 and it's not in any way participating in a game or doing anything useful, right? So the position is completely fine for black here. 
But I think f6 was just possible, right? f6, knight takes c7, queen takes c7. And you know what? Now you have the benefit of the strong square on e4, whereas that the same is not true for white, right? When you played f5, you also give white this permanent square on e5. Now you didn't. And um, then, okay, you can play rook a c8, or rook f c8. You can see if something's going on in the c file. You can maybe expand here on the, the queen side. So there are different options, okay? And looks just very comfortable for black. All right. So let's see the game, f5, bishop e2, knight takes c2, queen takes, knight f6, bring the next knight to e4, I like that, g4, knight e4, queen e1. But here, this is the first, let's say, critical moment in the game. So far, the game has been going pretty smoothly for you. You got out of the opening quite well, I would say. And then um, you even got a little bit of an advantage because your piece are better placed, all right? So here, you choose the wrong plan. You play bishop h4, and then later bishop g3, which is in the wrong direction, because as we already said, the bishop on h2 is pretty much the worst piece in the white position, right? The bishop is not participating in any way, looking at his own pawn, and you're spending several moves to exchange your strong, your good bishop on e7 against this bishop on h2. Why is this your good bishop? Because it's not being blocked by its own pawns, right? On the other hand, this is kind of your bad bishop because it's looking at d5 and there's no way to really activate it. Whereas this bishop on e7, it's harmonizing well with your pawns. Your pawns are covering the light squares, your bishop is covering the dark squares, right? So you don't want to give it away because then suddenly, you don't have a bishop anymore that's protecting the weakened dark squares, as for example, the square on e5. So that's just a little excourse on strategy and good bishops, bad bishops, and you always want to make sure you exchange the right pair of minor pieces. So here, what you want to do is exchange the light squared bishops, okay? So then you have this beautiful knight on e4 and cannot be challenged by a bishop and also the light squares in the white camp are weakened. Whereas what you're doing, you're doing what your opponent would love to achieve and you're even spending some moves to do it. So that's the wrong strategic uh, plan. All right, so how could we go about achieving the exchange of this bishop? We could first go bishop d6, which is also introducing this idea quite strong, queen h4, and black, white should probably deal with this, play queen e1 to stop that. And now a very nice move, a5. What's the point behind a5? Okay, sometimes you can expand on the queen side, but more importantly, we want to achieve the strategic goal of exchanging the light squared bishops. And we'll do this by going bishop a6 next. Right? And there's nothing white can stop that. And you're just in a very comfortable position then. Right after exchanging the light squared bishops, you have the better minor pieces. Uh, you have more space and um, if you want to you can exchange on e5 and you have this beautiful scenario strong knight on e4 which cannot be challenged let's, let's just make some moves with whatever this 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 let's just make some moves okay just to see this on the board now that's what i was talking about you have this beautiful knight on e4 it cannot be challenged by a bishop because a bishop as we all know cannot change his color he will always stay on the dark squares and cannot change it uh, challenge the knight on e4 and with this classic situation good knight against bad bishop what we'll actually see in the game unfortunately for you is the opposite your opponent has the strong knight and you have the bad bishop all right so let's see what happens bishop h4 another problem with this move is actually that white could maybe lock this bishop in with g5 okay i mean i guess for you it doesn't really matter because you want to exchange the bishop bishop g3 anyway but it's just another thing to consider so bishop d3 bishop g3 okay now we already talked about it. you just had the wrong strategic plan here you could still of course 
return with bishop f6, bishop g3, and now we get to a situation I was talking about, just the opposite, right? White has the strong bishop, you have the weak. Uh, white is the strong knight, you have the weak bishop. All right. So that's tough. That's a bad situation to be in, really, because you don't also have any counterplay. If this pawn wasn't here, the situation would be different because your bishop would be active on the long diagonal. But as it is, your bishop is not really actively taking place, uh, taking part in the game, and it's just fulfilling a defensive task. All right, let's see how the game develops. I think here you're doing quite well. Rook c8, occupying the open c file. Rook d8, rook c3, takes, takes. Rook c8, nice. b5, very nice move. I like this move, stopping white from going c4, or at least under worse cir circumstance for white. Now, queen d1. But here, queen d1, what does your opponent want to do? He wants to play queen b3. Okay, so what can we do to stop that? Bishop d5, which is the perfect square for a bishop anyway, right? You, all, you often want to find squares for bishops where the bishop is protected by a pawn. And then, of course, the bishop is also protecting the pawn. So it's kind of like mutual and it's hard to challenge the bishop here. It's protected because usually unprotected pieces always can be the target for tactical sequences. So... Um, bishop d5 was just a good move and planning to go queen a3 next going after his pawn on a2 and um, actually you have equalized here again so should be good for example a4 which looks like a logical move then queen a3 um, threatening both the pawn a4 and the pawn c3 a takes b5 rook takes c3 and with your active pieces you have equalized. This is equal. All right. Queen a3 is also possible, but then you still have to you have to defend in the end game. And it gets tricky because White plays queen b3, and he's actually improving his pawn structure. Why is he improving his pawn structure? Because from two pawn islands, right here, he has one pawn island here on a2, and then the other pawn island. It's a big island, I know. Is all the other pawns. Um, so what is a pawn island? It's just a pawn which is not cannot be protected by another pawn, right? So the a2 pawn cannot be protected by another pawn. But now it's all one coherent mass again, and the pawn structure is again better for white. So his pawn structure has improved, and he's ready to advance his pawns. The position is still about equal, but you have to be precise here. If you had played bishop d5, it would have been a much easier task. So here, the way to go is to play a5, okay? And now c4, you can go bishop d5, which is a nice move, uh, making use of this pin, which is why white cannot take the bishop, the rook would be lost on c1. And if white moves the king, you can go a4, that's the whole point. A4, white has to take, otherwise you take yourself, and now you can take on C4, right? And you have split up this pawn mass again, and now white again has this isolated pawn on A file, and you also have a pass pawn on C file, and this should be equal. This should be very close to equal. The problem is in the game that white can just activate his, his pawns and that's just a tough task for you because um, you have this weakness on the A file, you don't have any counterplay and you cannot challenge the knight on E5 which is of course perfectly placed, no doubt. So this was I think pretty much your last chance in this game to play A5. You could also start with bishop D5 when after C4 A5 would be a transposition but white has an additional option here to go b4 and now suddenly you cannot go a5 anymore um, and white can maybe bring his king to d3 
d2, protect his c3 pawn and then go rook a1, maybe even go earlier rook a1, I don't know, and go after this weak a pawn again. And um, while you might hold this, this will still be a lot of suffering. So a5 is the precise way to do it and play bishop d5 next and then pretty much just positions force that we saw with a black c pawn past c pawn and uh, white a pawn all right like i said after a6 c4 your position becomes very difficult because it's just a perfect setup for white with the knight on e4 e5 protecting pawn on c4 and white can just bring his king and improve his position and now you play rook b7 you would need to stay passive but i think you will lose sooner or later anyway white will improve his position as much as possible probably push his pawn up all the way to h6 and then bring his king over maneuver around my feeling is it's probably already lost uh yeah very very likely lost because just you're too passive and you're try to activate yourself with rook b7 doesn't work uh, white can just take and just takes the pawns and for once a mating threat but white can easily handle it and um, has well two very strong pass pawns obviously and is, is about to queen one so you resigned here all right ian um tough loss because you were doing quite well but i think it all originated with the strong plan right that that's what put you in the in a bad position exchanging your dark your good dark squared bishop against the bad dark squared bishop of your opponent so you always want to think about for what exchange am i aiming it's a really good question to ask yourself just thinking about if I could decide right now which minor piece stay on the board and which go off, what would I choose? Right? And then aim your play towards that. So we saw in that case that in that position, what we really want to achieve is, let's just go back to it one more time in this position. What we really want to achieve is to have a scenario where we have this knight against this bishop. Right? And then we see how do we go about it. Well, we first exchange maybe the light square bishops and then we exchange the dark square bishop against the knight on e5. And then we got it. Right? And then we have this perfect situation with our strong knight on e4 against the weak bishop or the bad bishop on h2. So that's a really good question to ask yourself. What exchange am I aiming for in this position? okay and then later on you put up resistance you came back into the game but there was this one moment where you could have played prophylactically bishop d5 and stop queen b3 and then follow up with queen a3 and that would have secured a draw i think fairly straightforward but you missed that and in the end game it was a little bit tricky there was still path to salvation let's say with a5 but it was a little bit difficult and then once the pawns get rolling, it was too hard to defend, unfortunately. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll check the chat if there's anything going on there. But I don't think you're here today, Mr. King Hunter. So just let me know, write me an email or on patreon.com and uh, you can let me know if you have any questions in terms of what you can do to work on that strategy part, I recommend the series by Johan Helsen. You'll find it also in the description of this video. Uh, he, put a, he put out a three part series about strategy. It goes from opening strategy to um, middle game strategy and end game strategy. And um, I think those are really good books to start with and to get a better grasp of strategic concepts. So. I recommend you to check 